Hello everyone! It's such an honor to be here on this virtual stage. A huge thank you to the India Inclusion Summit for continuing to do this amazing event, even during these very unusual times. My name is Doug Rowland. I'm a social impact filmmaker. I made the first film to star a deafblind actor, and I want to tell you a little bit today about what I've learned along my journey. I'm going to take you back nine years. We're in New York City. I was coming home late one night in the East Village, and I saw a man standing alone on a street corner holding a sign that said, I'm deaf and blind and need help crossing the street. I, I remember my first thought being when I saw him, I thought to myself, wow, this is the first deaf blind person I've ever met and I've hardly ever even thought about this community. I tapped him, he pulled out a notepad and wrote that he needed a bus stop nearby. I took him over there and realized that another bus wasn't coming for over an hour. So I wanted to sit and wait with him, but I didn't know how to communicate with him. So I just kind of instinctively took his hand and started tracing one letter at a time on his palm. It worked, he understood me. And over the next hour, we had a whole conversation that way of him writing to me in his notepad, me writing back one letter at a time on his palm. And, you know, I got to know this man Artemio as this charismatic, funny, warm-hearted guy who I felt like I had really made a connection with to the point where when his bus came, we were giving each other a big hug goodbye, and you know, I, I started tearing up a little bit, thinking I'm gonna miss my new friend who I'm never gonna see again. And this experience stayed with me for a really long time. And in looking back on it, I think the most resonant aspect of this experience was that in one interaction, I had gone from seeing this man Artemio as his disability to seeing him as a friend. And it was a real light bulb moment for me. And it was actually the inspiration behind the film Feeling Through that I ended up creating that was heavily inspired by this encounter. And it was a film that I wrote shortly after this encounter, but it lived on my computer for many years because I didn't feel like I was quite ready to make it yet. But years later, when I got that gut feeling that now is the time, I instinctively knew that I wanted to make it alongside the community. And it, I ended up reaching out to and ultimately partnering with the Helen Keller National Center to make it. And what was so great about working with them is that, you know, I, I live in LA, um, they're based in New York and Long Island, and I was routinely traveling to their headquarters in Port Washington, Long Island, to get to meet with a lot of people in the deafblind community, um, get to meet with a lot of the staff that worked there, that worked with the community every day, and really get this masterclass education in the community, but moreover, form a really personal relationship with the community myself. But it was also great to work with the Helen Keller National Center because I knew from the start of this process that I wanted to cast a deafblind actor, and they helped me do that. So they ended up reaching out to deafblind people all across the country um, as possible uh, actors for this role named Artie, who is obviously very inspired by Artemio. And funny story about that is that Robert Tarango, who we ended up casting, was not on our initial casting list. He actually worked in the cafeteria at Helen Keller National Center, and we were midway through one of our days of casting one day. We had a break in the schedule, and, and someone in the room goes, hey, what about Robert? So before Robert knows it, he's being pulled out of the kitchen and walking into this audition room for a film that he doesn't know exists. And it was one of those moments where the moment he walked in, he had this light and this charisma that I just instantly knew he was our guy. So now we have our deafblind actor, and what was again great about working with HKNC is that they provided an amazing interpreting team to facilitate communication between Robert and I throughout the process. And you know, during this process, we found out that Robert is the first deafblind actor ever to star in a film. And it's not just the deafblind community, but many disability communities that are extremely underrepresented in film and TV. Something like less than 5% of the roles that we see in film and, t and TV shows are characters that are portrayed with having a disability. And of that percentage, so few are played by actors with disabilities. And I think one of the reasons that's the case is because I think there's a lot of people who assume, oh, it's, it's just not going to be worth the trouble to go and get an actor with a disability. It, it's just too much trouble. But accommodations are made for actors all the time. So why not make accommodations for actors with disabilities? And it was really, not only was it quite simple once we had an interpreting team, but the film would not be what it is without Robert, without someone who has lived that experience of being a deafblind person and hearing directly from his voice and him being able to share that in an authentic way that really couldn't be re reproduced in any other way. Um, 
What was really amazing about making the film was we also documented the whole process. So we were simultaneously shooting this documentary where we were following the process of casting and working with Robert, but we were also following along with our year-long search to track down Artemio, the man who had inspired all of this. So that by the time it came to exhibit the film, we, exhibit, we were exhibiting it as this three-part fully accessible screening event called the Feeling Through Experience, which included part one, Feeling Through, the, the first film to star a deafblind actor, Robert Tarango, part two, our supporting documentary, Connecting the Dots, which follows working with Robert and also our search for Artemio, and part three was this panel discussion and Q&A with the deafblind community which is always different um, wherever we're screening the film, so that we also have an opportunity to highlight so many other great voices in the deafblind community and have our audiences get to hear directly from the community. So before I say anything else, let's take a quick look at the trailer. still felt like I could do it. The Helen Keller National Center says its goal this year is to provide accessibility for all. You're now part of the community. I'm going to make it required viewing for my students. It's so important. Thank you so much. So as you can see from that trailer, you get to see some moments of the film and some of the impact we've had on audiences, but you also get to see some clips of what a fully accessible screening looks like. And let me walk through the elements of accessibility that we brought to this screening event, because you might not be familiar with some of them. So first and foremost, we had open captions on the screen. So you might be familiar with closed captions that you can kind of bring up and down from a video when you're watching it you know, on your computer or on TV, but we had open captions that were burned into the image and we made them larger than normal so that someone who's deaf or hard of hearing and might also have some vision loss could follow along easier. Um, we also had something called audio description and that's something that I actually didn't know about prior to making this film but audio, descript uh, audio description is a narrative track describing everything that's happening visually on the screen. So you can imagine that if you are blind or low vision anything that's not dialogue you might have trouble following along with. So this is a narrative track that describes all the action that's happening on the screen so that you can follow along and, and you know, experience the whole story. And we also had as many as 50 interpreters and support staff at a single screening to provide that one-to-one -one accessibility. So that meant tactile interpreters for people who are deaf blind and communi communicate tactily. We had stage interpreters for deaf and hard of hearing participants and some accessibility elements to and from the theater. And, you know, we knew right off the bat it was so important to, to make this experience accessible to the very community that was at the heart of it. But I think that understanding was really drilled home to me at our very first screening, our premiere of the Feeling Through Experience in North Carolina, when we got to part three, the panel discussion and Q&A, and, &A, and uh, a, a man who's deafblind in the audience stood up and he said, you know, first and foremost, I really love that film. It was so moving and I love the representation of the deafblind community in this story. But moreover, I really loved that it was made accessible for me. And he, he continued and said, you know, a lot of times people think because I'm deafblind, I wouldn't care to go to the movies. But I love going to the movies. I love coming and experiencing a live event. I just never have the opportunity to do so because things aren't made accessible for me. So I think it was... In that moment, he, one of the first people to speak at our very first screening really drilled home in a much deeper way for me why it was so important to provide this accessibility and, and why it's important for, for more people to do so in more spaces. You know, it makes me think of, of, the, of the often said uh, statement that accessibility is for everyone. And, and to me, that's a really multi-layered statement. But I think it, at the highest level, what it means to me is that 
In a world where we all have access to the things that we want and need, each one of us individually is better off, and therefore we're all better off as a society. But moreover, it has a really practical application too, in the sense that a lot of the uh, innovations that, that, that are made to accommodate people with disabilities are innovations that people with, without disabilities use all the time, whether it be an elevator or you know, the ability on your smartphone to change the size and look of text. These are things that everyone uses, whether you identify as having a disability or not. So there's, a, there's really, it's a multi-layered thing. And you know, moreover than the accessibility at the Feeling Through Experience, we were bringing communities together that wouldn't normally have a shared experience. And that was very much inspired by you know, my meeting with Artemio nine years ago, where as a full grown adult, I'm realizing that I'm interacting with and, and learning from someone who's deafblind for the very first time in my life. And I thought, how could we create experiences where more people like me who knew very little of the deafblind community and maybe didn't have any opportunity to interact with that community could enjoy an experience side by side and have this collective experience. Because I think at the end of the day, there's no better way to connect with you know a person or a community that you don't know that well than having a shared experience with them and having a space where you can dialogue with them and ask questions and, and really learn from each other. And you know we found that not only was this a really um, amazing experience for people who are deaf blind to have this story that represented them on the screen, but we heard from so many people who went into this experience having never met anyone who was deaf blind, who knew nothing of the community coming out saying that it was life changing for them, that they, they now felt like they had a really heartfelt connection to this community. And you know, I knew none of this nine years ago when prior to meeting Artemio. I was gifted with this chance encounter with him that led to this story that we've been able to share with a lot of people. But I've learned along the way that it's it's so important for everyone to understand accessibility and inclusion, even if it's not something that you feel like necessarily affects you on a moment to moment basis, it actually does. And your awareness of it helps make the world better for everyone. And you know, I like to leave this with some sort of like actionable thing that you can do, you know, watching this, maybe, you know, wanting to, to further your understanding of what I've been able to share today. And for me, you know, the one thing that comes to mind the most is something that I said to the Helen Keller National Center during our very first meeting. I said to them, you know, I have a film that includes a deafblind character that I want to be played by a deafblind actor, but it's not a film about deafblindness. It's a film about human connection. And more, more specifically, the power of human connection despite our differences. And you know, if there's one thing that I've learned over the course of the last nine years, it's this something really simple. And it's that people who are deafblind and people with disabilities are people just like anyone else. And I know that sounds like incredibly simplistic, but to be honest, for me, that was something that I only understood intellectually before really engaging with the community, connecting with the community, having a lot of people who I call close friends of mine who are in the deafblind community now and, and, and other uh, parts of the disability community. And so if there's one thing that I ask of you today, um, and again, many of you already know this, but for those who maybe this is kind of an, uh, an aha moment for you, like it was for me nine years ago, is to really, anytime that you are engaging with or thinking about the disability community, understand first and foremost that there are people like anyone else and, and engage from that space. Because if you do that, honestly, you're, you're gonna be putting your best foot forward and, and you're, gonna be, you're gonna be interacting in a way and, 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 deal, and, and connecting with the community in the most important way. Um, and, and that's something that really you can take home and hopefully share with, with some, that understanding with someone else today would be also another actionable item that I could give you to do. But um, once again, you know, it's really an honor to speak here at the India Inclusion Summit, and uh, it's an honor to get to address all of you today. Thank you so much, and uh, to a successful India Inclusion Summit 2020.